I am meteorologist Ryan Davidson. I'm saying good morning to you because we are here early in the lab at the Weather Channel and we have some questions about different types of precipitation and how hail forms. So we're going to start first with different types of winter precipitation. We're talking about snow versus sleet versus freezing rain versus regular rain. Now you take a look at this, it's kind of an indication of what the atmosphere tends to look like. Right along here you see this warm air wedge. We're going to pay attention to that as we go through. So let's take a look first of all. We have through the cold air. If you have cold air from the top of the atmosphere all the way down to the ground, that's when we see snow. Everything stays frozen from way up high, way down to the ground. Next, we move over a little bit. We get this little intrusion of warm air. So you've got snow here, then it melts for a bit, and it turns into little pellets of ice, and then it hits the ground as sleet. Then we get a little bit further on, you get a little bit of a stronger wedge of warm air and it stays pretty warm through most of the atmosphere, but down to the ground it's still very cold. So you have this snow that falls and then it melts as it goes through this warmer layer. And then once it hits the ground, the ground is really cold. And what's happening here is that the cold raindrops freeze instantly on contact as it gets to the ground. Now once the air is completely warm, you have very cold air at the top of the atmosphere, and all those little snowflakes melt as they come down to the ground, they finally hit the ground as rain. So that's how different types of precipitation is formed. It's all about the thickness of the warm and cold air in the atmosphere. Freezing rain, that's what usually forms as chunks of ice on things. You get these coatings, that's what brings the trees down in central Pennsylvania in the middle of the winter. And in sleet, those are the little tiny little pellets of ice. They kind of look like little styrofoam balls. That's what we see as sleep. Now let's take a look at the summer weather. We've gone from winter, we'll go to summer, we'll talk about hail. Hail is really cool. You need a little bit of ice and you get a little bit of water and what happens is it starts to move these tiny raindrops up into the thunderstorms and once they get up here, they start to freeze. It gets really cold in the tops of the thunderstorms. So you get that cold raindrop and it starts to freeze. Now once it continues rising, you get more cold raindrops that stick to this and it becomes a very large piece of hail. You can, and then once the wind is no longer strong enough to hold that big chunk of ice up in the atmosphere, well that's when it tends to fall to the ground. You get massive, massive chunks of hail depending on the speed of the wind that is moving upwards. Let's take a look. Here's what you need. For a normal sized piece of hail, maybe about a quarter of a, there you go, a quarter, one inch in diameter. It's not a very strong wind, but if you consider it's 50 miles an hour moving straight up, that's pretty intense. Go a little bit bigger. Let's talk about what we have, teacup or baseball size, I believe, golf ball, one and three quarter inches, okay? That needs a little bit more wind. That's going to need 64 mile an hour winds going straight up in the atmosphere to make that piece of hail stay up there and get that big even bigger. Let's go baseball size hail. That's two and three quarters inches of ice. You're going to need a really strong upwards wind, about 80 miles an hour going straight up from the ground, straight up into the clouds to keep that piece of hail up in the clouds. And once they're so big that these upward winds can't hold them, that's when they fall to the ground. You're going to need for a piece of hail the size of two grapefruits, one massive eight inch piece of hail, you're going to need 160 to 180 mile an hour wind going straight up and updraft to keep that hail up in the clouds. All right, that's what we have for your types of precipitation and your hail. We'll be answering a little more questions a little bit later.